All right, guys, Cody here. Hey, uh, got some good news. I had three different individuals contact me on different mediums, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and told me that they passed the BEX. They passed their oral assessment. So uh, they also mentioned that the information garnered from these videos, podcasts, my book, uh, helped them in some small uh, way, shape, or form. And so uh, that's freaking awesome. That's That's the point of doing this. Uh, it's hard enough to get a job anywhere in any sector and it's completely competitive to get into DS and there's no information out there. For those of you that, that, uh, have been trying to get in DS for a couple years, you'll, you'll note that there's no, there's hardly any information out there. For those of you current DS agents will say the same thing. I had hardly anything out there in two, uh, when I applied in 2008, 2005, 2006, and then 2008. So, uh, you know, uh, congratulations to you three if you are watching this, and uh, I'm thankful that I could have maybe played a small part in your success. Um, and I'm happy to help out again with uh, for good people that want to do this. You know, if you contact me, depending on where you are in the process, I, I do have a family and I'm pretty I'm busy here and there. But if you're getting to those steps where you're about to get the oral assessment or you're about to take the test, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't have a secret formula, but I have some. Uh, I have information that I put out there, you know, about DS and, and, um, and it sounds like it, it helps and, and I'd be happy to help any, any good people. I have declined people, by the way, I've talked to someone on the phone that we just wanted to, uh, use DS as a stepping stone and I didn't help them out. Sorry, my fellow DS agents that, uh, that I served with wouldn't want them in there. And, I, who am I to make that decision? Well, whatever I choose what I want to do. So, uh, that's how it is. Uh, so listen, couple couple things. I'm gonna hit some questions tonight, but I've had someone the other day write to me. I gave him the answer in short, and then uh, and then I said, well, maybe I'll post about that, and I freaking lost it. So if you're watching this, um, or if you have asked a question I haven't got to you, you know, my apologies. It's not. It's not. Uh, it, it's, I didn't intend to miss you. Uh, hit me back up, and I'll make a video, or I'll just write you a message or something like that. We'll go from there. So some of the questions. Um, well, one of them, actually, I've made it my own. Uh, this next podcast is coming out. Episode 7 of the Off the X podcast is coming out uh, with a uh, uh, 20 years uh, now retired special agent from DS. He only retired a year ago, so it's still fresh in his mind. And um, he mentioned FSI. So FSI is the Foreign Service Institute, and I want to talk about it a little bit. So DS agents get trained uh, in, in a couple of different places. Uh, a lot of it now, the operational law enforcement aspect of DS. They get trained at the, uh, uh, I think it's called Fast C. It's in Fort Pickett, Virginia, I believe. I've never been there. Here it's freaking awesome. Here it's badass. So that's great. Um, <clears throat> FSI serves at the beginning of your time becoming an agent. You, you come together with other people in other fields of the State Department. So foreign service officers, you know, uh, economic officers, political officers, uh, you know, general services officers, facilities, maintenance, you name it, you all come together and you have a few weeks. I think it was like three weeks back then, back in 2008. And you guys get together and you do some, you just do some things, you kind of just get to know people. You do like the, uh, the Myers Briggs test and you go to Maine State, which is the headquarters of the State Department. And you see, look around and do some things. But anyway, that takes place uh, initially at FSI. What FSI is really known for is uh, it's it's a language institute. You know, it's the Foreign Service Institute is what it stands for. But by far more people, it's two more people. It's synonymous with language training. So in DS, you will have opportunities to go to language training. Um, and you might have multiple opportunities to go to language training. You might go for one language and go more than once because you might fail the first time. Um, and you know, that tip that happens sometimes and you'll hear this in this podcast with the guy failed, uh, but, but that happens. So oftentimes, uh, I haven't done language training there. There's other training that goes on too. So let me, let me jump ahead to that. So before Iraq, we had to do like a uh, familiarization course. It's just about Iraqi culture and, you know, and how to politely respond a little bit of language, but like very, like very just greetings and stuff like that. Uh, I took like uh, seven habits of highly effective people, an in-person course, um, uh, I took a leadership course there. There is, leader, there are leadership courses there. And if you want to do well on DS, you should, you should take those. Not because they teach you something that is mind blowing, uh, but it's just a good check in the box as you progress. So any questions on that, you know, I'll happy to expand, but, uh, but FSI is really known for languages. And so 
uh, people go there. And, you know, if you're doing like Spanish, French, uh, Italian, I think those are called the romance languages that you'll, I think it's like six months. You'll just do six months. I'm pretty confident it's just six months. If you go to take Russian or Chinese, you might be there from nine months to a year. And then you test. And then once you test, you have to make a certain level. So you get, you can get a zero. Oh, a zero is actually, I think a zero is passing, but barely. Um, and then there's like just not passing. There's zero, zero plus, one, one plus, two, two plus. And it evaluates you on uh, speaking, reading, uh, comprehension, and, and listening. Um, and, you know, if you're in the Facebook group, the Becoming a DSS Agent, um, that's a good place to get more information on that. Just because I said I haven't done it, um, but I'm very familiar with it, at least from an outsider's uh, view. Um, but if you want to know more, ping that Facebook group, and there are several people in there I know that have done language training, and they can hit you up. Uh, but yeah, but you'll go those if you fail. Um, I, I think generally they'll just have you do it again. But remember, you're on a time schedule. So with DS, when they when they do these transfers, if you bid on a post, a lot of, a lot of times what post you get is based on timing. All right. So like if this if you're in Baghdad and you're supposed you you know you're back then we thought we'd get one of our top ten posts and you bid on some posts that you think are very reasonable, but the timing's off because you leave Baghdad in September and they need someone there in June. It's just not going to work. Or vice versa, you leave there in September and they need someone there. Uh, you know, and, and December is when you need to get there. What well, was a two month gap? Now, if it's a six month gap, for example, and there's language training for Portuguese and you're going to Brazil, that might work. So that's, that's kind of getting into nuance and minutia of it. But, uh, uh, bidding, um, yeah, I guess we're getting into bidding now is, uh, is oftentimes uh, predicated on, on timing. So there you go. Uh, how is it working with the MSG? So yeah, so we talked about uh, MSGs and Marine Security Guards. Marine Security Guards are um, responsible for the uh, protection of personnel, property, and um, and classified or sensitive information. And so are DS agents, right? But the Marine Security Guards are your are your are your actual individuals standing security inside the Chancery, protecting the cons the, the Chancery, the uh, the embassy or the consulate. Um, and uh, and your operational DS agents are operationally responsible for them. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos, so this is your first video watching. Go check it out. Go go back and check out these others. I go into a little more detail. How is it working with them? It's awesome. It, it, it depends who you are, right? I was a, I was a marine. I was a marine security guard. I loved it, right? It was it was. Uh, I was thinking of the ARSOs that mentored me when I was in MSG, and um, and you know. Uh, and uh, they were great to me, and I, I like to think that I was good to my to my Marines. I say my Marines, the Marines of the detachment. Uh, but I only had, you know, uh, in Baghdad, I wasn't responsible for the Marine detachment. Someone else was, and but but you know, you come across them every day, and so I built a good rapport with them, and would you know would hang out and and go to their Marine house parties and everything. Um, and then when I went to uh, Vietnam, we actually brought in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. We actually brought in the detachment, which was pretty cool. It was the first detachment, uh, the first Marines to serve, active duty Marines to serve in uh, the south of Vietnam since they left April 30th, 1975, when they evacuated the embassy. So that was historical. And whenever we opened it, it was a big freaking deal. Um, and it was awesome, man. I had a great group. I brought them in. We, we set up all the policies, procedures. We all worked together. Uh, everything from react plans um, to to uh, you know uh, just basic post orders post court orders and um, you know and it was it was phenomenal it was awesome we you know I set up the the logistics to get all their their uh, equipment in through Vietnam through dip pouch um, we set up uh, what else did we do oh we got their housing you know well in advance before they got there we set up their housing you know we worked with facilities. And, and then different local uh, places to see what would be a good fit. And we set it up and they got there and, they were, and it was great, man. They, they were good dudes. Uh, we only, I say good dudes because only, there's only dudes there when I was, when I was there. There's only five Marines and a, a five watch standers and a deck commander. Um, what I mean by watch standers, the guys that actually stand post and the de detachment commander, deck commander is uh, their boss. So it's usually a staff sergeant or a gunny or, or higher, depending on the, the, the size of the detachment. Um, and yeah, so I, I love, them. I mean, these guys are, are generally, uh, they're highly selected. When I went through MSG school, we had 110 in the class and 53 made it. 
Um, and it's not, I, I mentioned this in another video, it's not because they're, you know, drowning you in the water and you're running the beaches and you're doing Navy SEAL shit. It's a lot of it's based on personality and, and interpersonal skills and critical thinking skills and your ability to reasonably articulate anything, right? Not, and drop, not drop F-bombs left and right. It seems I forgot how to do that, right? But, uh, um, you know, that, that was, that was part of it, part of his training. And, um, and so they're good, they're, they're just good people, but look out for them. You know, uh, if I could give anything, look out for your Marines. And I'll give you an example. I had two Marines, uh, in, in Vietnam, uh, get in a fight at post one happened with literally got in a fight, fist of cuffs. Um, I found out about it. They told me about it. And it just so happened that their inspecting officer from, um, the region was there and he found out about it and they came to talk to me and I knew if the RSO knew about it, this may be good or bad advice. You could have to take this in your own, but I knew if the RSO knew about it, they might've sent them home, but I was also really close to these guys as in a professional way. I knew them. Um, and, uh, you can't be getting on fight in a fight with guns. Hey, right. And, uh, so we, we, I brought them in together and we talked it out and I made him shake hands and we talked like men and I said, it goes no further than me. And, uh, and that was it. And that was good for the command for the, for the expecting officer too. the deck commander knew about it. He wanted to bring it up to the R. So I told him not to, um, he did anyway. Um, I wasn't a fan of the guy and I, I, uh, mitigated it by telling it wasn't really that big a deal that he exaggerated. Um, and it wasn't, they didn't pull out their fucking guns, but uh, I mean, I said, they didn't pull out their guns, but fighting while armed uh, in freaking postal one is it's not the best idea. But anyway, but look out for those guys because they'll look out for you, and and that's important. And it's important that you make, uh, you know, good decisions when dealing with them. So uh, it was great. Love working with the Marines. Uh, so a guy just posted um, on on uh, in our Facebook group, and it was a it was a it was a lengthy post, but but I think what it comes down to is his wife is is very well educated. She's finishing up her master's. And, um, looks like he's finished up his bachelor's and he's just wondering if you were to apply for DS and, um, go to one of these overseas assignments, particularly those that the high threat assignments where you can sometimes bring your spouse, if the spouse, um, will be, you know, kind of put in just some admin position or secretarial style position, or because she's very well educated, will she get a, uh, a, a nice position? So, um, I didn't have a spouse, but I know the spouses that came there. And most of them were put in, 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 yeah, not not necessarily secretarial, uh, but yes, some ad administrative roles, GSO, general service, uh, not GSO, cloak, uh, community liaison officer. You assist some people. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be lesser than a, than what you would need to have a master's degree. Um, you know, that's just part of it. Uh, but you know, you get to have her there with you, so I, I would think that's a benefit. And you know, she can. You know, and, but it's like that in almost every post. Like if you're going to get positions um, for uh, if a spouse decides, whether it's a male or female spouse decides to travel with you, the likelihood of their positions being something that's really commensurate to their education, particularly if they have a master's degree, is slim. Um, you know, now one option is to have your wife go apply to be a foreign service officer or a DS agent, but eventually you'll get split up if you become two DS agents. But uh, there are foreign service officer spouses and um, DS agents that are married, and the department is pretty good about getting them. Uh, oh, I forget the term. I used it in another video, but get them to the same to the same assignment. Now your assignments become limited, right? Because you know you got to have a spot for whatever co uh, um, whatever field they're at cone, whatever cone they're in. So if they're in a political cone or economic cone, they have to have a position for them. Have a position to you that position has to be commensurate with your your uh, your grade level sometimes you can do what's called a stretch position so a stretch position would be and we talk about this in the next podcast that i'm about to put out but a stretch position is if you are a three or a rank of a gs13 and it's a gs14 position um sometimes they'll allow you to stretch into that position and so you are serving in a gs14 position but you're actually a gs13 or in our case an fs3 in a, I'm sorry, in the State Department's case, an FS3 stretching into an FS2 position. And uh, those are good for your career if you get one um, because you're doing basically what the department sees as an FS2 job, as a higher level job, and you're doing it as a lower level person. So it's good. But anyway, back to the, the original topic. But yeah. Um, and then you also asked if if the if other government agencies will help you get a job. No, 
they won't, I don't know of any that'll help you get a job. If they have jobs opening, like if USAID, USAID has a job opening, you know, uh, you know, it's all kind of goes into this embassy pool and they may, you know, and they'll put out to the CLO, the community liaison officer, what jobs are available. And then, um, you know, you can try to get it that way. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's just the way it is. So, you know, you have a couple options there. Um, anyway, all right, well, I'm taking up enough time, 15 minutes. It's been a while. Uh, I always say this, but it's true. Life is busy. And, um, you know, I'm trying to get a lot of, a, a lot of, trying to do a lot of side hustles. This is one of them, although it's, it's just, uh, just takes time to do these things. So I appreciate the continued support. I do have, uh, my book is still out doing well, um, uh, on Amazon, um, in, uh, paperback, uh, uh, Kindle and Audible. So you can get it there still at five stars. So uh, I think it's over 104 reviews or so right now. So doing five, still at five stars. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the guys I talked to this morning and other guys before that have passed, have said that the book helped them. Uh, one guy said he read it like three times because it, it kind of talks. I, I didn't intend to do this, but when I wrote the book, um, I didn't intend to do this when I wrote the book, but I, I talk about kind of my thought processes and why I did things the way I did them and what could have happened and the consequences if I didn't do them a certain way. And that type of stuff helps, um, it, particularly in your scenario portion of the train, of the uh, interview. So, uh, Anyway, book's still out, so get it. Off the X podcast. I'm up episode seven, slowly getting better, slowly improving, having different guests. Had a, have a, I've had a bunch of, of the seven people I've had on, six of DS agents. Um, the next couple of weeks, I will I have on a couple of security contractors. Those guys are vital to our operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Israel, Syria, a lot of different places, uh, uh, places in Africa, and uh, they need to get. They, they need, you know, they need to be heard as well, and they're solid fucking dudes. So, I'm bringing them on. So, off the X podcast, you can get it on Apple, you can get it on Spotify, you can get it on Google Podcasts. Um, it's on Podbean, my website. I'm having trouble with it, and I'm not tech savvy, so so the latest episode is not up there. Um, but uh, you know, I'm still working on it. Um, what else? My social media agents unknown underscore book is my Instagram. Have Facebook, just type in Agents Unknown, you'll find it. YouTube, well, you're watching me, you found me, but YouTube, just search Cody Perron. Um, and then becoming a DSS agent is becoming really popular. I think we're at 100 something, almost 200 people. Um, and uh, people asking questions, building little communities. There's a lot of DS agents in there now. I say a lot. There's a good bit. And from all different levels, from BSAC students to recently graduated BSAC students to 10 years in to 20 years in, just retired to been retired for. 10 years. So all different levels and everybody uh, appears to be pretty helpful. And, um, you know, and that's good. That's what we're trying to do is build a community. So go out and check it out. Becoming a DSS agent, fill out the freaking questions. I've had people come in and not fill out the questions. If I don't know you, if I know you, like our, we're buddies, right? Uh, of course I'll know your background and so I'll prove it. But if I don't know you, you need to articulate your, your, uh, your interest. Um, I'm not allowing, People, it's, I'm not allowing some people, even if you do articulate your interests, if you're not eligible to be a DS agent, chances of you getting in are slim. You know, I don't know who you are. Sometimes there might be somebody drops some OPSEC that we don't need to, to, uh, to curse. So not, it's not anything against you. It's just, uh, it's just the way I'm going to run it. So, um, all right, man, if y'all got questions, hit me up info at Cody Um, or just hit me up on one of the apps and on uh, one of the uh, social media apps. And uh, I'm going to go drink this bourbon now because I'm tired and I need to go to sleep. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, let me know if y'all need anything. Thanks, y'all. Out.